Well, how you doing, everybody? Today, we're gonna take a quick look at King Arthur Legend of the Sword, the latest film from director Guy Ritchie, starring Charlie Hunnam and Jude Law. It's the story of a boy who grows up to become king of all England, with giant elephants and giant snakes and mages and a whole lot of birds and ritual sacrifice and strange women lying in ponds distributing swords. This was a very bizarre experience. I don't think I have ever seen a movie that was so batshit crazy and yet so boring at the same time. I don't know how Guy Ritchie pulled it off, but he did. Now, there are times in this movie when it's not boring. In fact, there are times when it's pretty much impossible to be bored. In fact, it starts off pretty exciting, albeit in a what-the-fuck-is-going-on-here kind of way. The movie opens up when Arthur is just a wee lad, and his father Uther and the people of England are in a battle with some renegade mages led by a guy named Mordred, and really, with a name like Mordred, should have known the fucker was evil. And not only does he have his own army, he also has the mama kills from Lord of the Rings, because... Why not? But King Uther easily kills him with the powerful Excalibur, which apparently has a plus five against magic users. But his brother Vortigern, who again is obviously evil, is not too happy about Uther being king and decides he should be the ruler of all England. So he ritually sacrifices his wife to Ursula the Sea Witch from The Little Mermaid. Stay with me now, stay with me. Stay with me. And this sacrifice apparently allows him to become one of those flaming demon knights from the fourth Elder Scrolls game. Stay with me. Stay with me. And he kills the queen, whose name I don't think is ever actually mentioned in the movie. She's just the queen, because, hell, why should she have a name? And here's where the story just gets completely nuts. This movie not only has an origin story for the sword Excalibur, but also for the stone. Because here's the thing. Demon Knight Vortigern is about to kill Uther, but before he can, Uther sacrifices himself by plunging the sword into his own body, and his body becomes the stone that holds the sword Excalibur until one day when Arthur can grow up and retrieve it and take his place as king. Yeah. And then little baby Arthur floats down the river to become the English Moses. And this is the part where I would normally jokingly say, and then it gets weird. But you know, no, this is not where it gets weird. This is where it gets lame because the story between the batshit crazy moments is remarkably uninteresting. So much so that I came close to falling asleep a couple of times. I think one of the biggest problems comes down to the characters, because this movie really doesn't have any characters. It just has actors saying lines. There's nothing particularly interesting or exciting about any of them which is amazing considering the talent involved. I mean, you got Charlie Hunnam, Jude Law, Jimon Hansu, Aidan Gillen. These are all talented people, but they just have nothing to work with here. And the female lead in this movie, a Spanish actress by the name of Astrid Berges Frisbee, who I have apparently seen before in the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Uh, I don't remember her, but then again, I remember remarkably little about that movie. I know I saw it. Um, that's about all I know. But anyway, she plays the mage. That's actually how she's credited. She's just the mage. And I don't think they ever mention her name during the movie. Because, again, why would she need a name? What is with this movie and not naming its female characters? She's apparently an acolyte of Merlin, who I don't think we ever actually see in the movie. There's someone in the cast who's credited as Merlin, but I'll be damned if I remember seeing him at any time. Uh, maybe I did doze off at some point and I just missed it. I don't know. But in any case, maybe she's supposed to be Guinevere. 
I'm guessing. I freely admit I'm guessing. I really don't know. But I'll tell you what I do know. Her performance was dreadful. I'm not even sure she's actually a human. I think she may be a robot. And she may not be entirely to blame because, just like the other characters, the script didn't give her much to work with, but... Man, she was not good. I read somewhere that they were originally trying to get Elizabeth Olsen for this part, but they weren't able to get her for some reason. I think Miss Olsen dodged a bullet there. The action sequences are kinda hit and miss. The stuff that involves, you know, giant elephants, giant snakes, any of the stuff that involves animals attacking people really does look pretty good, but the stuff that involves actual humans fighting each other is not shot very well. It's just way too shaky for my taste. Man, what happened to Guy Ritchie? He's usually better than this. I typically enjoy his work, even when it's not his best stuff, like Man From U.N.C.L.E. I was still entertained. The Sherlock Holmes movies, I enjoyed those, silly as they are. Like, the end of the second Sherlock Holmes movie with that duel of the inner monologues between Sherlock and Moriarty made no goddamn sense whatsoever, but somehow it worked. It was fun. This... I don't even know what happened. And the amazing thing is, this was supposed to be the start of a six-film franchise. Really? They thought they were gonna get six films out of this. Well, even good filmmakers make a bad film once in a while. No one's perfect. Hopefully this isn't a sign of things to come for Mr. Ritchie, and he'll get back on track. If you haven't seen the movie, good. Don't bother. If it comes on cable sometime in the future, maybe watch the opening bit and the ending bit with all the batshit insanity and just skip everything in the middle, because that's really the only stuff worth watching. And if you have seen it, I'm sorry. And that's all I'm gonna say about King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Till next time, take care.